right, everybody. All right, everybody, welcome back. So today we are going to unpack uh, a little bit further uh, Lasso, which we started last lecture. So yes, I've been using this to uh, play around with the autofocus on the camera, so I can delete this right now. So let's start off as follows. Before we delve into how Lasso works, uh, let's do the following. Let's just do another uh, brief recap of how CART works. Okay, so at the root of CART is actually a, a minimization problem. So. So now note that you can find this equation uh, at the bottom of the cart.rmd uh, shiny app that we've been playing around with, but we're just going to write out the equation to play around with this a little bit further. So how does cart work? Find the tree t that minimizes the following equation. Okay, so we're gonna write this out slow. So, the equation that gets minimized in CART is as follows. It is the residual sum of squares plus and let's use some different colored chalk here. Alpha times the cardinality of t. Now recall that the cardinality of a tree, remember cardinality from set theory, is just a way of counting things. So when we specify the cardinality of a tree, we're talking about the number of leaves. But what are all these components? The residual sum of squares is a measure of fit plus alpha times a measure of complexity. So remember folks that, okay, how do we measure the complexity of a tree? All right, it is the cardinality of t, or the number of leaves in the tree. How do we measure fit? Well, it's the residual sum of squares, which we're going to write out right now. So, there is a lot of, there, there are two sums, and it might look kind of daunting at first, but let's write it out. Now again, this might look a little bit daunting, but all this is saying, and why don't I use different colored chalk here, for m equals 1 through the cardinality of t, which is the number of leaves, basically, for all leaves, all right? And then remember, the way uh, cart works, it's like triage, it's basically segmentation. Either you go left or you go right, depending on the question that occurs at each stage of the tree. So, for all that leaves, for all observations in the leaf, right? So for all observations at that particular leaf, maybe there's 10, maybe there's 50, all right? What you're gonna do is, you're gonna take the difference of the observed value, the fitted or predicted value, and square that. So remember folks, that if our uh, predictions are spot on with the observed value, these all equal zero. 
So, the smaller the residual sum of squares, the better the fit of all our predicted values to the observed values. So this part right here, and why don't I carefully circle that, are all related. Okay. Over here we have, okay, this is just the measure of complexity of the tree. But then what we have here with the lambda is that it sets the balance between the two. Why? And this is the key idea, folks, is that as the fit of a tree, as a how about this, as the tree better fits the data, it necessarily has to be more complex. Also, vice versa. If you have a very simple tree, all right, for example, just a stump, it's not going to fit the data very well. So as this value goes down, the measure of fit, or maybe we can think of it as the measure of error, goes up. So the moral is as follows. Moral. Whoops, one L. As RSS goes up, so also does the measure of fit, or I should say, the, the, the thing, go, uh, let's see, as the uh, error, the residual sum of squares, which you can think of as error, goes up, it's probably because the model complexity goes down. Right, because for simpler trees, you're going to have worse fit. So maybe we can think of this as a measure of lack of fit. Yeah, maybe that's a better way to think about it. The RSS is a measure of the lack of fit. So the bigger the RSS, the worse the fit. So and again, what I'm saying is that there's a relationship between these two. As the fit gets worse, it's probably because the tree is just less complex. It's like a stump. But also, maybe you can think of it the other way too. As RSS goes down, meaning as your tree better fits the data, it necessarily has to be more complex. So also, does alpha go up? You are gonna need a more complex tree to better fit the data. And what is it that sets the balance between these two? Alpha. Great. Let's keep that idea in mind because lasso, in fact, works the same way. So unfortunately, if I had a, uh, unfortunately I don't have that large a blackboard in my house. So it would have been cool to sort of write cart and lasso next to each other but I guess since you're on video, it'll be a good idea to compare what we're gonna write down right now with what I'm just erasing right here. All right, so I'll try to write out the description of lasso in the exact same way. So, lasso. Find the fitted intercept beta naught hat. The slope for the first predictor, beta 1 hat, dot, 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 beta p hat. Find the values of the intercept and the p uh, slopes that minimize the following equation. It's going to be, again, RSS plus, this time it's not alpha, it's lambda. Find the, uh, the fitted intercept and slopes that minimize RSS plus some measure of model complexity. Recall for trees, the measure of model complexity was the number of leaves. Remember the cardinality, that double bar in front of the T, uh, around the T? But we're gonna do something different. Our notion of model complexity is gonna be a little bit different when we have an intercept and P slopes. So let's write this out. 
This part here is very similar to what we had before. Now we don't have a double summation to sum across all leaves and sum all across all observations within each leaf. We just lump them all together. It is i equals 1 to n yi minus yi hat squared. Again, it's the residual sum of squares. The better the predictions or the predicted values match up with the actual values, the smaller this gets. So this is a, remember folks, a measure of lack of fit. As this value gets smaller, it's because your y hats match the y's. But remember, where do these y hats come from, folks? That's why we had a, a multiple regression as a prereq for this course. Where do these y hats come from? They are y i hat is equal to beta naught hat plus beta 1 x, uh, what you always put the x1 i, it is the, the i value of the first predictor plus dot 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 plus beta p x p i. There we go. Again, folks, this is something you should have seen in multiple regression. Just plug in the values of your fitted uh, uh, betas and match them up with the various predictors, and you're going to get a fitted value yi hat. So that's where this comes from. But now, let's write out the rest of this part. Plus lambda, all right? But now, what is our measure of model complexity here? Model complexity, this is not a tree, so it's not the number of leaves, but rather it's the absolute values of all the slopes times sum j equals 1 to p of absolute value of beta j's. Remember, folks, that's where the shrinkage happens. So, Remember that when we looked at those lasso plots, all right, certain of the beta hats would go to zero. So it's the same idea here, folks, for model complexity. If all the beta hats are zero, what that means is you've dropped all the predictors from your model, and you therefore have the simplest possible model. So uh, let me come back to that point and just finish this here. So again, to build the intuition, what is this part here? This is a measure of lack of fit of model, all right, plus lambda. Once again, it's a measure of model complexity. All right, so let's uh, carefully match up components here. So uh, this kind of goes with this, remember? All right, I'm very careful to circle things appropriately. And this part here, there we go. Okay, there's two things to note here. The first thing does not include zero. How I, uh, maybe, so maybe I'll do it this way. Does not consider beta hat zero in the measure of model complexity, meaning the intercept is left out. The intercept can do whatever it wants. Whereas for the other cases, all right, uh, what's it called? For the other variables, for the other betas, right? Uh, what's it called? Uh, it, 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 they can be shrunk to zero. Does not consider beta zero intercept. But now, 
how do we interpret lambda? Lambda can be thought of as a penalty. You gotta pay money. Do I have my wallet on me here? Yeah, I got my wallet, all right? So, imagine this. Let's say lambda is sky high. It is like hundreds and hundreds of dollars, right? Well, hundreds, thousands, millions, whatever, right? The point is, if this is very, very high, you're gonna pay uh, per unit of model complexity these amounts of lambda dollars. But that's a problem when we're trying to minimize things. So, this thing here, when it costs a lot, and I don't know why I took my wallet out here, really, I was gonna fill my money for comedic effect, but I, don't, I can't fit that in organically. Why don't I write this out here? Uh, over here. When lambda is large. When lambda is large, you pay a lot of money for complexity. So if you pay a lot of money for complexity, you're gonna dial down the complexity. What does that mean? All these values are gonna go to zero. So remember in your slider, right, in lasso.rmd, for large values of lambda, when lambda is large, let's put it this way, complexity is expensive. And because complexity is expensive, how is the minimization going to work? All these beta j's, all these slopes are going to go to zero. They're going to shrink to zero. When lambda is large, complexity is expensive. Thus, all beta j hats will, and here's the key word, folks, shrink to zero. So, I highly recommend you go back and play with the slider. For large values of lambda, you're going to pay a price. Remember folks, we're trying to minimize things, but you're going to pay a price for complexity. So how's the optimization? What's the optimization is going to do? The optimization is going to return low complexity models models where the beta hat j's are shrunk to zero. But let's say lambda is really small. In other words, complexity is cheap. Well then, you know what? This value can get, uh, you can have a more complex model, and therefore if you have a more complex model, you can get a better fit. Again, RSS and model complexity go against each other. And what sets the balance between the two? It's the lambda. When you have large lambda values, complexity goes down, and fit will go down as well. When you have, actually wait, is that right? When you have, I always have to think about this, when you have a, a very uncomplex model, right, the fit is gonna get worse. So, why don't I write that down over here? And then we'll end today's lecture. Okay? As lambda goes up, as lambda increases, model complexity decreases. And if model complexity decreases, what does that mean? You have a simpler model. If you have a simpler model, uh, it won't fit the data as well. RSS will go up. RSS will go up. Yes, that's it, folks. They go against each other. But now, as lambda goes down, model complexity goes up. Complexity is cheap, so why don't we buy that complexity? Let's go to the store and buy that model complexity. If you have a more complex model, you can get a better fit. In other words, 
RSS is lower. RSS is lower. Now you can see folks, by the way that I kind of struggle with this, I always have to think carefully. But just remember that when it comes to cart or lasso, there's a balance between these two and depending on how expensive model complexity is, either via alpha in cart or lambda in lasso, depending on how, what that price is, it's gonna set that balance at different levels. All right, thank you.